Welcome back. Tuesday's Monetary Policy Committee's Do Nothing decision continues to dominate conversations with growing calls for policies that will allow the injection of much-needed cash into the Nigerian economy. My next guest, Dr. Doni Salami, is an economist and a member of the Monetary Policy Committee of the Central Bank of Nigeria. He joins me to share his perspectives on the MPC meeting considerations and decisions. A good morning to you, Dr. Salami. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you so much good for joining morning. me on the news, on the, on the program. Now, let's start with um, the decisions. Yes. Did you agree with the overall decisions yes. that were reached? Yes. Why? Well, for us, and let me start by saying the MPC ordinarily is 12 members. At this meeting, there were 10 members for Sharaisi structural reasons. And all of us, from different perspectives, came to the same decision that at this point, nothing should be done in terms of raising rates or changing monetary policy instruments. Why? For us, that's what's in the best interest of the economy at this point. And we need to be very clear what, are, what the challenges that the economy faces are and how do we uh, deal with these challenges. So no matter how you look at it, the numbers are clear. Economic activity is contracting. The, the Bureau of Statistics made it clear from their quarter two figures. The economy shrank by 2%, slightly over 2% in quarter two, having shrunk by about 0.4% in quarter one. Inflation is rising. Manufacturing, it, so many of the indices are not in the right place. But what is clear and what is central to all of this now is that if we're going to come out of this, we need investments. If we are coming out of this, we need access to foreign currency. If manufacturers say they cannot import, I don't, I'm not sure that the price of FX is as much the problem as access is. Because right now, we're in a situation where things are having to be allocated. And therefore, the decision of the Monetary Policy Committee is predicated on at least three things. The first, a decision was taken in, at the last meeting in July which was to raise rates as a means of stimulating supply flows or foreign currency supply flows. Now, there is always a lead time between when you take a decision and when it works its way through the system. So you cannot come back and say you took a decision in July. We must now in September review that decision so immediately. We have, and uh, that, that's all, that position is further strengthened by the positive flows that had been recorded in, that, in the period since the last decision was taken, about a billion dollars. That's number one. Number two, the point has to be made about the need to safeguard this economy. And for us, financial system stability is a very important matter. The recession, the lower oil prices have created problems for asset quality of banks, and therefore, you don't go raising rates in order to do what? They simply compromise further the asset quality of bank, uh, uh, of, 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 of bank assets. Dr. Dr. Salami, sorry, sorry to cut in here, but yes. what are the MPC's issues with stagflation and recession? With the MPC's issues with stagflation and recession, let me actually say the following, that in my own personal judgment, the economy's position is slightly worse than stagflation. Stagflation means stagnant growth with rising costs. If you look at the data, we have rising costs, yes, but we actually have shrinking activity. So it's not stagnant growth, it's actually shrinking a contracting economy. And for any, any professional economist, that's, your, that's worse than your worst nightmare. And therefore, the MPC had to have real issues with them. The issues are very simple. Number one, we had to continue to keep our eyes on inflation. If inflation is allowed to rise beyond a certain level, taming it in future becomes very, very difficult. Secondly, we had to have our eyes peeled for growth. But if we are going to grow, Nigeria, regrettably, has a low uh, local content uh, uh, um, variable for what we produce. Too much of what we produce has an import content. And if you're going to stimulate that, if you're going to get that going, then of course you must find foreign currency. So certainly those two things are very are and remain very important as far as the MPC is concerned. But to push growth, you will yes. agree with me that you need an easing in policies. <sighs> I so doubt it. Tight monetary policies stifle growth. Again, let's be very careful what you mean by tight monetary policy to push growth you, you need to ease. 
I assume that what you are telling me is that easing means reducing interest rates. Yes. Okay, let's deal with it this way. So you reduce interest rates. Eh? What happens? We don't just legislate or announce a reduction in interest rates. To make a reduction in interest rate in the policy rate stick, the central bank through the monetary policy management will have to inject liquidity into the system. You do that, you stimulate the demand side. But your structural problems on the supply side don't catch up to the demand stimulus that you have injected. What does that give you? Higher inflation. That's number one. Number two, so you inject liquidity into the uh, system. Well, we've all seen it time and again. That additional liquidity simply attacks your currency. What does that mean? The currency further weakens. I'm not sure that any of us wants that because a weakening of the currency, given the nature of our imports, will raise inflation. So there is no way that you do any of that. And then, of course, please, it's also important to make the point that there is need to, uh, to ensure institutional credibility. Imagine a central bank takes a decision two months ago and two months later <laughs> reverses itself. When we know that there is a lead time between when policy decisions are taken and when the impact of those policies are realized. And so it's important, therefore, that from at least these perspectives, the decision, and by the way, when you say the central bank's monetary policy decision was do nothing, I'm not quite sure that that's what it was. It, it, we, it, held rates, we held rates, but I don't think that's... Next, because do nothing gives us the impression of a bunch of ladies and gentlemen who show up, have coffee, and do nothing. Well, that's uh, that's the impression most Nigerians, and thank you so much for oh, clarifying. Oh, that we just drink coffee yes, and do well, nothing. Well, thank you for clarifying that. Wonderful. Because you see, at the July meeting, yes. uh, you know, before the, the meeting of this month, yes. the NPC members' considerations was released to the public. Yes. So everybody had an opportunity to read the comments. And uh, we also read your comment. Yes. You argued that raising policy at that time yes. was unlikely to achieve anything other than worsen economic and business environment. So mm -hmm. what changed, what has changed to influence your vote of last week Tuesday. Now remember the point that I make that the vote this time was to keep rates the same. When I voted in July I was absolutely very clear in my mind that and by the way you read my own personal statement so I, that's what I'm trying to explain now. Now my own personal statement was very clear. What were the key considerations that if we raised rates at that time it was very clear to me that taking the issues around Brexit the, challenge, the chances that we would get the kind of foreign currency inflows that we required were not that great. Now, it appears that since that vote was taken and my statement was written, the rate, rates have been raised and about a billion dollars seems to have come in. In my view, that's interesting. And the hope is that that will continue. That's the hope. Now, go back and you will see that by the time you look at what we used to get, relative to what we spent, a billion dollars of inflow on the back of about two and a half billion dollars of outflow still leaves us very vulnerable. But remember the other point that I just made, which is that these policy issues or these policy um, uh, positions take time to work their way through. So even though I contended then, and I probably still have some reservations about how interesting the international environment is as to give us the kind of flows we want because there's something which is very important if you're going to attract international flows it's not just to say this is the policy but the policy must be credible the policy environment must be consistent and so having lost the argument in july and please i make no bones about it i lost the argument in july my colleagues voted to raise rates Collective responsibility. It's a central bank monetary policy committee decision. It was also at that meeting that it was decided, you know, for the relaunch of the interbank foreign exchange market. No. Well, at the so. time, well, yes. That was the interbank. If you are talking about the flexibility of exchange rates, that was in May. In May. Yes, that was in May. Was in yes. May that that was oh, yeah, 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 yeah. So the, the, money, the market had already been launched. Yes. And at the time, and we're still facing that challenge, mm -hmm. the currency volatility. Yes. For 
you. What yes. do you think should be done at this time to ease that volatility that we're seeing at the market? For me, I think there are a couple of issues that I have consistently argued, and the, the biggest of which is transparency. For me, yes, I'm one of, I come, my own economics, my own understanding and appreciation of economics comes from a particularly market-driven perspective. Please also understand me, markets do fail, but there are ways of dealing with market failure. However, my view is that when you are going to allocate scarce resources, let markets do so. Now, if that is the case, and that is what we were trying to do with flexibility of exchange rate management by saying, now we go to markets. If that is the case, then my view is that at the present time, we've moved a step forward, but we still haven't gotten to where we really should get. And please, by the way, let me um, not shy away from this point. Policies are not straight economics. You have to look contextually at what is happening around. And there are some times when those of us who are purists would like to see certain things done, and those who are in the management say, well, yes, we agree with you, but because of A, B, C, and D, we need to go step by step. So for me, the, as far as your question about exchange rate is concerned, I would simply go for a more transparent allocation, you know, let the market transparently allocate foreign currency that the Naira will weaken, perhaps, and it's a perhaps, because at this point, in economics, there's something called overshooting. My sense is that the Naira has overshot, partly because of uncertainty, partly because of issues around confidence. But the moment we are able to be transparent and people can see what is going forward and backwards, that, in my view, would restore confidence and allow the Naira to begin to, you know, to, to come back to what is a fair value. Right now, it is undervalued. So to restore confidence to yes. the economy, yes. and uh, of course you're not immune to the reality of what most Nigerians are going through at the moment. There's I'm no afraid I'm not. I'm afraid I'm not. So, I'm an economist and a teacher. Okay, so you're, you're faced with these issues literally every second I'm afraid so. of your life. So for you, yes. what would you suggest as practical growth strategies at this time? Well, I think to begin with, the Honorable Minister for Finance, uh, I listened to her comments, I think they were on Monday, articulated or at least suggested to us that the government already has a medium-term strategy uh, for growing the economy. I think that needs to be properly articulated and circulated so that everybody is aware of it. Because that then would show the opportunities into which private businesses in particular can plug into. That's number one, and I think that's very, very, very important. The second thing is that whether we like it or not, the central bank has a role to play. And for me, the particular roles that the central bank must play are at least two. The first is that there are issues around the transmission mechanism that we have been, the transmission of monetary policy that we have been trying to fix for quite a while. And we have to be, you know, we really have to focus on these and try and, you know, and, and, try and deal with them more vigorously. Particularly, you may not know this, but 100 borrowers out of a banking population or banking account population in excess of 40 million are responsible for 40 percent of total borrowing. And so when people make so much noise and say, well, oh, it's always to reduce uh, interest, I say, well, for me, a bigger challenge is actually access to credit. And so if credit is that which oils the wheels of uh, activity, then giving people or more people access to credit would probably, within all possibility, ease the challenges that we face more than currently what we have. So at least those two things come to, and, and of course I made the point earlier about the transparency of processes and markets. People so, must be able to form expectations about what's going to happen next. For me, these are very important. So Dr. Salami, if by November there are no m notable macroeconomic you know, indicators changes, mm -hmm. how would you vote and why? Ah, madam, now you are asking <laughs> for what in our layman's language we call expo. <laughs> <laughs> asking me how I would vote. What the, the best I could tell you is that by November, hopefully we would have seen the data which comes out for quarter three's GDP numbers. We would doubtless have seen other data around inflation. And by the way, the next set of data around inflation over the next couple of months are particularly important because I was listening to your, um, to your commodity market update just now. 
And one of the things that was pointed out is the challenges around rainfall and commodity harvest potentially. Okay. So it will be interesting to see what those happen. It's also going to be interesting to see the further impact on what it is that we see as far as FX liquidity flows. So when I see all of that, I will be the first to call you to let you know how I will vote. <laughs> All right, Dr. Salami, thank you so much for coming on the program it's this morning pleasure. and, of course, uh, sharing your perspectives it's with us. It's a very real pleasure. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Business Morning continues in just a moment. Stay with us.